everyone. We are here with the OG Matt Stauffer. How are you doing, Matt? I'm doing good, man. I'm good. All right, cool. So we're here at Laracon 2019, and I've wanted you on my YouTube for the past, like, five years. So uh, first of all, um, how are you doing, and how did you enjoy Laracon 7? I'm doing good, man. Laracon was amazing. Um, I always love meeting 900 people, right? It's yeah. 900 people. I can't handle that many people, but just every time you walk through, there's, like, 20 new people who want to be your friend. And actually, like, either one or two people made apps about making new friends at Laracon. So the talk went good. Meeting the people went good. New York is amazing. I'm feeling good. So Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. So um, you own a company called Titan.co, and you're based out of Chicago, right? Yeah. Okay. Although we're remote. So based out of Chicago, really, at this point, means we founded it in Chicago. And my business partner still lives there, but that's kind of it at this point. So. Okay. And what, and what do you do? We make web apps, usually. So what we'll tend to work with is we work with startups. Or we work with usually like big enterprises and nonprofits and stuff like that that are on PHP in some way and they want to modernize. And so we use with some for some reason who wants PHP, someone who wants modern application development. So we do backends for web apps, we do um, backends for mobile apps, um, we do some React and React Native and some Vue and that kind of stuff. So awesome. And how long have you been doing that? We started Titan in 2011. I've been developing on and off since. 2000 something early 2000s um, but we actually started the company in 2011 so okay okay and so how did you personally get into Laravel um no I had so I'd done WordPress and then I wanted to do something more powerful there's this thing called Expression Engine and uh, Expression Engine was good but what powered it was even better called Code Igniter it was like a framework kind of like a Ruby on Rails kind of thing and so um, I used it for a while, but the problem is the people who ran it were just a garbage fire. They were just making terrible decisions left and right. They were, they were stopping things that would help the framework grow up. And so I was like, I can't do this. So I started running Rails for a while. What I was like, what I really wanted was what Rails offered, but for PHP. All my clients were PHP, all of our servers were PHP, I knew PHP. And then this new kind of new kid in the block came out called Laravel. And there's four or five like, new frameworks that came out then. And I checked them all out and Laravel was really impressive. And so I checked it out, started blogging, and I was learning, and its community was totally different than the rest of them. And I was like, oh, this is what we're going to do, and kind of right. been doing it since, you know? Awesome, awesome. Yeah, I also came from Code Igniter back oh, yeah. myself. Yeah. Nice. And, uh, yeah, same, same sentiments. Um, so, um, what are you looking for? You, you have an O'Reilly book, Laravel Up and Running. Mm -hmm. um, what made you do that? And how um, how has that been being a published a publisher uh, yeah. author? So O'Reilly came to me and they said, "Hey, we we, we think you might want to be someone who writes a book." And I went, "I've grown up with O'Reilly books, right? Like I've got three O'Reilly books on my bedside right now. I grew up with the animal books. This is amazing." Um, but all my friends who self-publish said, you're going to make so much more money if you self-publish. So I said, well, what's the purpose of me writing a book? Is it teaching? Is it making money? Is it, you know, advancing the reputation of Laravel in the world? Like, which things do I want? And then what's the best decision? Because at that point, they could have said, hey, we want you to write a book. And I could have said, cool, I'm going to go write my own book, right? And right. make the money. And so what I realized was that while I would have liked the money, the number one reason I wanted to write a book at that particular moment, there's nothing wrong with making money, but the number one reason I wanted to make a book was for the most people to learn and the most people who wouldn't learn it without the book to learn, right? Because I was a little bit less interested in targeting people who already knew and already had opportunities for learning. And so I said, what's the best way to do that? It's not self-publishing, because self-publishing gives me to the people who already follow me. And I wanted to get to the people who didn't. So O'Reilly, because of how long they've been around, there's universities, there's libraries, there's companies that buy every single O'Reilly book as soon as it comes out. And there's a lot of developers who won't buy a book unless it's got an O'Reilly or some other kind of big name on it. And so I thought, I'm going to make a lot less money, but it's going to have a much broader spread. It's going to have the spread of Laravel to more people, and it's going to be like the validation that Laravel is a real thing because you've got an O'Reilly book, and that's a validating thing, and I want my community to have that kind of validation. And it didn't hurt that I don't have a PhD. Um, I didn't study programming in school. I run a company with 20 people, and I have a degree in English, right? And so this is kind of my PhD a little bit, to be like, yeah, well, I wrote an O'Reilly book, right? You know, yeah, that's kind yeah, of like yeah. my validation. And so I thought, you know, I'm going to make less money. Now, in the end, I discovered that when you self-publish, you also don't get to set the price. And then Amazon takes whatever price that your publisher set and cuts it by like 50%. So I made way less money than I thought in the first place. But I'm still glad I went to O'Reilly because so many people have gotten it. Not only do a whole bunch of people get what I wrote, but then they sold the publishing rights to people in China, Brazil, um, 
two other languages I can't even remember. And that was amazing. I never would have got, done that on my own. Plus, my friends walk into like a Borders or whatever when you still see them, and they literally see my book in the store. And that's something I never could have done on my own. So I'm glad I did it. That was my reasoning. If I did it again, if I did another book, I would self-publish and take the money. But I'm glad I did that for my first book, nice. you know? Yeah. So, so last question. At uh, your talk, you talked about uh, onramp.dev. Mm -hmm. So um, do you want to give a little spiel about what that is? Yeah. And, yeah. yeah that's mm -hmm. awesome. So what I said in my talk was... Laravel has changed a lot of people's lives. The number of people who told me I was a pizza delivery person or whatever and I learned Laravel and now I'm doing so well. One guy who I put a tweet up on, he said I was, I was making 18K and now I work for all these US based companies and I make 80K and I get it flown around the world, all that kind of stuff. And I said, so Laravel's great because all of our lives have been better. But like, what should you do when something good happens to you? You should share it. What do we want to do? We want to bring more people in for so many reasons. Laravel's great and I want other people to have the same transformation. Our community is better when we have a more diverse set of people and we have more people in it. And we want other people to have these opportunities, you know. And so what I said was, what can we do? You know, if the question is, what has made Laravel successful for the last eight years and what can make it successful for the next eight years? The answer for me is community and being welcoming and inclusive. And the answer about how we're going to make it successful going forward is, how can we open it up to more people? If Laravel's great and it's transformed our lives, how do we make more people have that opportunity for transformation? And the problem is, most of the resources out there, including my book, assume that if you're coming to Laravel, you already know PHP. But so many people don't. They come out of a front-end boot camp, or they've never coded before in their lives. But what I want to do is make it a space where if you've never coded before, or you're coming from a front-end boot camp, or even maybe if you're coming from like WordPress or something like that, there's a resource lined up for you for free to get you to the point where within, hopefully, you know, not a very long period of time, you are able to make money doing Laravel. Because it pays well. Development pays well, Laravel pays well. I want more people to have that chance, right? And so I wanted to build a single resource, open source, contributed to by the whole community, where when you meet that person who's like, you know, I got out of that boot camp and I just can't get a job, or, you know, I've been doing this crappy job, but you know that person's smart, right? You say, go to OnRamp onramp.dev and you just get that embedded in your brain and they go there and it's got all the things they need to learn with checklists next to them, the best learning about how to do good teaching from people like CodeCamp and stuff like that, so how we can learn how are they teaching people and how can we do the same thing so that you finish on ramp and you're ready to apply for all these jobs, right? Not only are there all these jobs, but there's all these jobs for saying, why are the only people we can hire like old school PHP heads? It's because we're not doing a good job of making it easy for new people in the community. I want new people in the community way more easily so that we have this amazing, diverse, and rich set of people who are all getting that same value out of Lar Laravel that the rest of us are. So, nice. that's the idea. Nice. Well, uh, running out of time, so uh, one last thing. What is your social media? Yeah, I'm at Stauffermatt, S-T-A-U-F-F-E-R-M-A-T-T, -T -T, on Twitter, and... That's really the only one worth following at this point. So yeah. that's me. Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Well, thank you, Matt. I appreciate it. And uh, everyone, don't forget to like and subscribe to his channel. Uh, if you are not following him on Twitter, please do. And look forward to the next Laracon. All right.